Hey guys, K-Dog here. We are doing a WWE Seth Rollins unboxing. I have my friend Shane here. Hello. He can explain this. So. <laughs> um, we got this at Five Below. Uh, not super far from here. It was cheaper than Walmart because Walmart's like close to $15 depending on what Elite Series you get it in. Yeah, there's the back as you can see. It was $5 even, I think, ain't it? Yes. Yeah, five dollars even, even though it's all ripped up. Um, we were gonna unbox it today, and like, we're just gonna rip it open. Yep, rip Seth Rollins. Pull out your figure. I have my Seth shirt on. Makes sense. Burning it down. There we go. Now he looks like he's dead. <laughs> Plastic nowadays. Now, uh, here's like a practice curb stomp, like that, and then like you could play with it if you want. He's got the black shirt on, as you can see. There's the back of it. Um, you could have matches with him, like Grimm's Toy Show on YouTube. He does like funny vlogs with him. You can move his arms, as you can see, legs, you know, walking. Now, they're not as good as Jack Pacific action figures where they were. The Jax one, you can literally move way more than the ones more nowadays. flexible, yeah. These ones, like, you could barely do it. It's weird. Almost gonna break. This is my first uh, nowadays action figure. My old ones, I, I have an old Sabu one. And, like, for him to do a moonsaw, it'd be hard to do if you're doing this action figures. Yes, yeah, that's pretty cool. It'd be cool if, uh, since he burns it down, he would be on Storyfire. Yep, it's an app you can download. Um, it's going to be popular on YouTube one day. Someday it will take over YouTube and Storyfire don't demonetize your videos, but you have to unlock the privilege first to uh, upload videos on there, but you can still do posts on there. Stories. You can do stories. That's another reason why it's called Storyfire, because when it first came out, I think it was like 2016, uh, McJuggernaut gets the YouTuber, he announced that you could do stories on there. I don't know if the first plan was to do videos at the very beginning. I do know he knew his friend Brian at the time. They're in cahoots. Brian is the owner. Yeah, he's like the head honcho of the whole thing. As of now, um, you're like in a contest with other people around the road and like, if they pick you, then you're like, you get the badge to do videos on there. And like, eventually, hopefully someday, we'll see people like Mr. Beast and PewDiePie on there. Yeah, that'd be hella cool. That'd be cool if the official WWE was on there and WWE Superstars. Because as of now, I don't know if anybody from WWE even knows about Storyfire. Right. It's still little right now. Now, since uh, Grimm knows Kurt Hawkins, that'd be cool if... Because Grimm's on Storyfire, if you told Kurt Hawkins about it. Yeah, then it would get really popular. Because Kurt Hawkins does the Creator Pro. And that's where uh, the Shook crew are on. I, they graduated, so I don't know if they're in bigger independent circuit places or not. And you can say a bunch of stuff on Storyfire that you can't on YouTube. Oh, you can, like, do bad language. Like, um, if you want to, like, have music, you won't get it copyrighted. Um, you can't, like, cuss non-stop. Like, you're allowed to cuss, but they don't want you to do it, like... Repeatedly over... Right, yeah. yeah. They don't want you to, like... How would you say it? Like, have the privilege and, like, overuse it, basically. Yeah, abuse it. They don't want you to abuse it. There you go. That's a good way to say it. Respect any, um, video site you're on, you know. As of now, it. there's a lot of people that don't believe in Storyfire. Yep. I don't want to say any names or anything, but right. there's a guy Hate that comments, you know. there is a guy on YouTube that streams and he's on Twitch too, but he don't believe in Storyfire at this moment. But I won't say his name, I guess, for respect reasons. <laughs> yeah, anything else? A lot of big YouTubers are going to Storyfire, like Boogie Two Nine Eight Eight. You know, um, there's Kid behind the camera, Lance Store. There's a YouTuber, Michael Luzzy, but he don't upload on there as much anymore, but he has already. Hopefully in the future he does more. Uh, Grim does 
some story fire content every now and then. Uh, a new YouTuber this year, Self Care, she has a profile on story fire, I think, but she don't have any videos out yet. And McJuggernaggit's new girlfriend, Ashley, she has an account on there, but no videos yet. McJuggernaggit's brother, Big Brother, he has new videos coming out recently on story fire. Um, January of 2020 will be McJuggernaggit's last video on YouTube. Yep. Strictly story fire from now on. And he's like 90% story fire and like 10% YouTube as of now because he barely uploads on YouTube anymore. True. Back to the figure. Um, He's got great pants. Yeah. I remember when he wore that outfit. Pretty cool. Now this is an old figure because you can see... Um, probably have to go close to it. It's the Kingslayer from... 2017 when he defeated Triple H at WrestleMania 33. True. Now, my shirt is um, the Beast Slayer when he beat Brock at WrestleMania 35. And he also beat Brock again at SummerSlam this year. Which everybody thought he was going to lose both times. Yup. Now he's like the rumor to turn heel apparently soon from what I was seeing earlier. Uh, if you want to know a lot more... <laughs> about wrestling support and subscribe to wrestle talk because they do a lot more now than they used to they used to do just raw smackdown and just the takeovers only in the wwe pay-per-views now they do aew reviews every week they do live streams every week they even have uh new workers there they're back to doing um Raw reviews, SmackDown reviews, NXT, and about four minute videos. That way you don't gotta like watch long videos. Right, it's usually like 10, 12 minutes. Now the mega news, the mega news is like uh, 10 plus minutes, I believe. Which is short. Yeah. Now, it's not. <laughs> the cool thing about this figure is, um,. You can buy it at five below real cheap and five dollars. You can even throw it at your friends. And I'll catch it like that. And then um you can't really do super kicks like him in real life. Like it'd be kinda hard. You would literally break the figure trying. It's really awkward. Maybe one day we'll get it signed by Seth. Oh, and that'd be cool if they come to the state I live in. And then, um, yeah, it'd be cool. They don't do a lot of signings where I live, but it'd be cool if they did. Fun fact, his real name is Kobe Lopez. Yup. He's dating Becky Lynch, gonna get married one day. Yup. It'd be really cool. It'd be cool if they live streamed the wedding. Which her name is Rebecca Quinn, real life. Yup. First ever SmackDown Live Women's Champion. Yup. First ever NXT Women's Champion, SmackDown Women's Champion, and Raw Women's Champion ever. No, she didn't have NXT. She was the first ever in that one promotion, but I forgot the name of the title. Oh, that's right, yeah. I would look it up, but we're filming on my iPod right now. She's won so many titles, I just get confused sometimes. Um, this is our first video of an action figure on this new iPod I have. Well, I didn't do other videos on my old iPod either, but it's my first like unboxing like on youtube that's expensive ipod it's so really if you're nice. so if you're watching don't judge because it's only my first time i'm not like a movie star i'm gonna right. be professional it's ain't hollywood we don't have any bloopers here right it's ain't hollywood and then like if he wants to copy the fiend he can like walk like this and he can also and if you can also leave them there, if you want to, or you can karate chop them. Like the other YouTuber, Dustin Lavongo, he likes to karate chop stuff a lot. <laughs> What's that? Oh, crap. Did mess up? Okay, we're back. Yeah, we're back. We had some technical difficulties. Somebody was uh, calling in from the station. Um... <laughs> But yeah, fun fact about Bray Wyatt is that 
um, before he even became the fiend, he had the idea. It's just Vince didn't want him to go ahead and do it. He had other creative plans. Right, yeah. Vince, I guess at the time, wanted him to do, like, the Nexus stuff and then, like, everything after the Nexus, which I think was the Wyatt family after Nexus. He had a lot of fun, though, over the years. Yeah, he ended up meeting his uh, new girl, had a baby of JoJo. They're married now. She used to be an, um... Backstage, um, wasn't she like an interviewer? I interviewer. She was one of the ring announcers, wasn't it? Like when they'll say, making your yeah. way to the ring, and then blah, blah, blah. She had a couple jobs. But if you have a five below in your area, it'd be cool if you check it out. I'm Tell them that I sent you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure um, wrestlers from WWE are going to go to AEW soon. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you want... If you think WWE is getting boring, and if you want to, like, switch to something new, definitely AEW, because I've been watching every Wednesday on TNT Network. John Moxley went over there, um, Jake Hager, um, Dustin Rhodes, Dustin Rhodes, not Godus, but Dustin Rhodes. Cody Cody Rhodes. Yeah, there's Cody Rhodes. American Nightmare. Uh, there's a guy from Grimm Show, MJF, which I didn't watch Grimm at the time, I didn't know MJF on the show. There's Pac, who was Neville in WWE, now recreated. Yup, instead of the red arrow, it's the black arrow, and instead of the, um... Rings of Saturn. Rings of Saturn, it's the Brutalizer now. He's a, he's heel, obviously, you know, good heel. He's heel like he was on 205 Live, but I feel like he's more meaner than the heel he was in WWE. Like, I feel like he's more, I guess like his finisher, more brutal. Yeah. his finisher is a Brutalizer. That makes sense. Um... He's not called, um... Crap, I can't say it. It's on YouTube. You know what I was going to say? The B word. I can't say what his nickname is on AW because YouTube has strict policies where you can't say certain things. I you wasn't can Google it, though, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, on D- in WWE, PG, his nickname was the King of the Cruiserweights. And he would be like, bring me my crown when he would get, like, on the ropes during uh, his entrance. But I can't say it on YouTube. But if you got on Storyfire, you could say it. True that. I don't know if I spell it out if YouTube's AI bots would still catch it or not, so I don't want to take any chances. Right. Wait, I know a way I could tell you guys. Um, If you guys ever seen the movie Awesome Powers, there's a guy on there named Fat, and then there's the rest of his name, and that's uh, Pac's nickname in AEW. The second part. Yeah. But if you watch that, you'll know what I'm talking about. The big guy on Awesome Powers. Yep. Um, I mentioned John Moxley earlier. Um, he's actually with Renee Young from WWE Real Life. Um, they're going to start a family soon. In real life, John Moxley doesn't take any crap because in WWE, when he went by Dean Ambrose, um, they were eating at a table, if you remember, on Total Divas. And yep. some drunk guy took Renee's hat. Dean jumped over the hedges, probably like taller than this times two, or and he climbed over it like jumping out of his seat, got the hat, and it was all on camera. He, he almost even, hurt the guy. Yeah, he even said the F word to the guy in some kind of a sense. But Renee, <laughs> Renee was like upset about it, but his um her family <laughs> was like kind of laughing about it and stuff, and then Dean started hanging out with Renee's mom. <laughs> Check out Adam Rose. He recreated himself. Got bigger, more buff. Not the same guy he used to be. Oh, yeah. He's definitely more bigger now. Doing, like, more buffer and stuff. There's also, um... Well, Big Cass, when he first left WWE, he did gain a lot of weight because, like, he was going through alcoholism and, like, his life was going down the long road, the wrong road, but now he's back on track and... He, like, has abs now, kind of like how the Big Show lost weight, and he has abs now. Because in 2004 at WrestleMania 20, Big Show was 500 pounds when John Cena did the attitude adjustment, which at the time, I can't call what the finisher is because of YouTube. You remember what it's called? Yes. It was called a a different name, but, but now in the modern era, it's called attitude adjustment. He picked up uh, over 500-plus pound Big Show, slammed him, and he won the U.S. title at that time. 
I don't think it was the U.S. title we see nowadays, but it was the U.S. title that you'll see in the video games. It'll say, like, Cena U.S. title. And then, like, now Big Show is, like, more smaller now. Yep. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff on WWE's page. You can look up a lot of facts. If you have the network for nine 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 a month, um, you can, like, go back and watch matches from, like, the 80s and stuff. Really legend matches. And just like always, your first month on the WWE Network is always free because WWE always plugs that almost on every episode of Raw and SmackDown. I'm not sure if they do in NXT. I don't pay attention enough. Um, UFC 245 is coming December 29 this year. Um, tune into that. Um, but at Survivor Series, um, <laughs> Seth Rollins will be the team captain. I forgot a lot of the people that's on his team. Ain't it like Seth, Kevin Owens, Drew McIntyre, Ricochet, and Randy Orton? I think that's yes, the five members. That is all five. Randy Orton was apparently supposed to be turned babyface, but he still has that where he wants to act heel, but he don't do the RKO, and we think he's gonna do the RKO. And he stuff. just teases it, mind games. Right, mind games, just like he teased everybody, like he was going to AEW, but he signed a new five-year contract. Yep. But yeah, I was um, Seth Rollins, uh, hopefully the members on his team don't call us Raw this year, even though people might want to go for other people this year, because last year Raw did a clean sweep. They don't count the kickoff show when the New Day beat um, one of Raw's teams, but they don't count that apparently. Right, because it's not on the official show. Because it was like 6-1, but because it ain't on the official start time of the pay-per-view itself they don't count it which i don't get even xavier woods was saying we should count it ec3 ec3 should go to um aew oh my gosh dude ec3 i don't know a lot about him but shane knows more about him and i seen what he did to james storm with the belt and then (laughs) there was like a referee or a cameraman that Tripped EC3 or something. He started beating him with the belt. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny. Um, James Storm, uh, he had red stuff all over his body. I can't say what it is because of YouTube, but you can probably assume what the red stuff is that was coming out of his body. EC3, his real name is Michael. A lot of people don't know that. I did not know that. Um, I discovered that earlier. It's like Michael Hutter. Yeah. I forgot his um middle name already because I didn't know that was his middle name either. Maybe Luke Harper go to AEW too. Um, he's not really wrestling right now. Tell them about uh, the other thing that you thought, the storyline, and back the Dixie Carter thing. Oh yeah, I thought um Dixie Carter was really EC3's aunt. Um, it was just storyline, like they're not actually kin. Um, I didn't know that. So when I was watching it at the time, like I fully believed it. And, um, if that wasn't his real name, last name was Carter, um, I thought it was Bateman, um, when he went by Derek Bateman, and he was part of the Nexus, which is one of the all-time, um, best groups ever. Like, um, I remember when the Nexus was shooting with the core, you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, the new Nexus, like, when it was CM Punk's group of people, that's when Wade Barrett, like, form the core or something like that i didn't get to watch a lot at the time i've only seen like clips and like stuff on the network about it i do know the the nexus the original one that had way there they would come in and like demolish the whole ring they would even attack uh i don't know who all was on commentary but i know michael cole was there at the time it might have been jerry lawler too but they was attacking the officials the announcers the referees they're attacking the commentary they were ripping her they were ripping um, the mat uh, around the ring where it was, like, exposed in the concrete. Kind of how um, Tommaso Ciampa on, like, NXT will do on, like, some of the takeovers. They would, like, basically demolish the ringside. A lot of people don't know this, but um, CM Punk, who is Philip Brooks out of character, um, he beat the Shield in a 3-on-1 handicap tag match like it was no problem. This is one of CM Punk's movements he would do in WWE. Cool fact, he has a Pepsi tattoo on his left arm. Yeah, I hope this is... Yeah, this is my left. And also a fun fact about CM Punk. 
Uh, he's the only guy to beat the Shield 301 by himself. Yep. A lot of times, the one that we've seen that was like actual on TV or a pay-per-view, uh, it was because of Roman they lost, because Roman got something in his eyes. But if you look up CM Punk matches on Google, you can see at a lot of live events, he beat the Shield like either 10 times or over 15 times at live events. And I'm pretty sure, like, all those times, it was not Roman's fault. Right. We just don't have a way to find out, like, how he won all those times. They didn't have any videos of it. As you can see, um, this one doesn't have the blonde hair. Because, um, like K-Dog said, um, this is when he fought um, Triple H, the game. This was, like, after um, Davey Rollins and stuff, like... It wasn't as soon as he debuted with the blonde hair. Um, I'm actually kind of glad that it's fully black now. It looks better. Um, in my opinion, Seth is one of the all-time like great. Um, he's beaten Cena before. Um, he beat uh, in 2018. He beat Roman Reigns and John Cena back to back in the same night on Monday Night Raw. It was. I think the go home show to Elimination Chamber 2018 because I think that was when they had the seven man and like the go home show they had a gauntlet or something and Seth Seth and Roman or Seth and John started it and then either Roman or John came second and Seth beat him. He's also beaten Demon Kane. Um, I remember when he turned on Kane too, the Authority Kane. I would have loved to seen um Rollins versus Taker like. 2007 Taker or something um, back when he was really good. It would have been cool to see uh, Seth and Taker like one of the manias and stuff. That would be cool. Yeah. It could still happen because um, just the rumor, like it's always a rumor it seems like of Undertaker always to come back and stuff. Let us know in the comments who you um, think Taker should fight at WrestleMania 36. Um, yeah, 36 already. It's crazy. I know. Um, who could be, like, it'd be cool if he, like, fought someone, or, it, it'd be cool, anybody who fights would be cool, but it'd be cool if, like, the person was, like, dressed as a pirate or something, because it's, like, pirate theme. Uh, that might be too silly or something, just because it's pirate theme. Maybe I, he should fight the Fiend or something. Oh. Yeah, the Fiend. The whole pirate thing, I'd kind of, like, ruin that year's mania if he fought them, because it'd be, like... Taking an opportunity from somebody who'd want to see him fight more than some pirate dude. Right. Like Paul Birchall or something. Because <laughs> I remember when they announced uh, the Tampa Bay pirate theme WrestleMania, I said something about Paul Birchall or something. He was a guy that would feud with William Regal, and if William Regal would lose, he would have to dress in one of the costumes Paul Burchill would choose. That was years ago when I first started watching wrestling. Wasn't that long ago, um, Kari Sane, she had a pirate gimmick, um, when she was in NXT, and then when she came to main roster, she had it for a little bit. Um, I really liked it. Now, according to Grimm, whenever he was at one of the events where they were showing off the new figures coming out, he noticed that they took one of Kari Sane's gimmicks off her action figure because they didn't want like to think there was a connection to her and WrestleMania. I don't know why they would do that. But. Right. They don't want people to think it was all about her. No, I thought it would have been cool if they kept the pirate gimmick until then and like because her whole thing was pirate theme. Her moveset, she would walk from one turnbuckle to the other turnbuckle like walking like a pirate or something. Um... It'd be cool if one day there was a five man um, from each of the um, companies like ROH, Impact, WWE, and then um, AEW, and like they had like four teams of five, um, where it could be like five in each corner, um, one person start, and then like they can tag one of their four partners. Um, that'd be really cool. Um, I don't know who I'd pick personally yet. I have to think about it. Something else to be cool is if um, WWE 2K fixed WWE 2K20 because there's a lot of glitches and bugs that still are not fixed. Also, you can't unlock everything because the game. Yeah, it's weird. Um, you used to be able to go to community creations and like download anything, but you can't do it anymore. 
it would just freeze on the loading thing when you're downloading something, and then sometimes the game would crash. Also, Mark Henry's back in the game. That's a plus. That. That's a plus, and Mankind is in the game. Which is uh, the only Mick Foley in the game, though, like, character. Right, yeah. And, uh, something else that's cool that's coming up is the first ever female war games. NXT, yes. I can't say that word anymore on YouTube. Uh, the first ever female games. Um, right. We can't, that's why, um, the Viking Raiders are called the Viking Raiders now because... Apparently in NXT you could say the word, um, like when two people countries fight each other, that word, um, now they're called the Viking Raiders because of Vince McMahon. Right. And, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> the match we're talking about is, um, where there's two rings and there's a cage, like, yeah. on top of the two rings and you can go in any ring to, like, pin anybody. Yeah, there's going to be uh, Shayna's the captain and uh, Rhea Ripley's the captain of her team. Um, the rumor is Dakota Kai is going to join Shayna's team and like do a little heel turn. But we didn't really get to see Team Kicks uh, be a team that much when they came back. They're only for a few matches, but now we could probably see them fight each other. Right, because Rhea didn't want um, Dakota Kai on her team because she wanted Mia Yim as her last um, partner. We all know on Monday Night Raw, um, Seth Rollins was going to defeat um, Walter, even though a lot of people like to call him Walter, that's the technical way to say it, but I always say Walter, but when Seth was about to do the curb stomp, um, the rest of Imperium attacked him, right? Yeah, um, Imperium is a group with Walter, um, Fabian Eichner, Alexander Ale Wolf. yeah, Alexander Wolf and, um, Marcel Bartel. That one's the hard one to remember, but uh, according to a lot of people, Seth Penn, Fabian Eichner, even though it was Alexander Wolf, yeah. he's a, a former member of Sanity, which WWE uh, destroyed them. Yes. Can't say the other word. Um, but they're all still part of the company. Um, I would say Nikki Cross is getting used the best, and then Alexander Wolf. Um, Killian Dane's been getting pushed in regular NXT, and then Alexander Wolf is on um, uh, Imperium now. I would say the worst one is Eric Young, because we only see him running out there to 24 championship, and he could be used way much better than that. Um, Nikki Cross is actually with um, Killian Dane in real life. Yeah, they... They got married, like, earlier this year in, I think, Nikki Cross's hometown on Glasgow, UK, or something like that. Also, Candice Lee raised with Johnny Gargano. Oh, they had some cool matches. They both beat each other in the independent circuit. Now they're, like, in WWE, and, like, it'd be cool if they had, like, them fight each other in, like, WWE, but I don't know if they'd ever do that. Is it, um, Roger and Jesse? Marina. Um, Marina Shafir is with um, Roderick Strong. Um, I got him mixed up. Had to ask K-Dog. Um, yeah, the only ones I know are single is Jessamine Duke and Shayna Baszler. If they are with somebody, like they keep it definitely private. Um, Ronda Rousey is with Travis Brown. 